Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Ah, uh, yes. Welcome back, everybody. Another week, another episode of Random Heathen Ramblings coming at you on all of your major podcast streaming sites, hopefully. By now, if you're not yet a follower, subscriber, whatever, um, of uh, Midgard Musings and of, of the Random Heathen Ramblings, and I just have to wonder, sincerely, why? What is it? Is it just not that interesting? What would you like to see more of on this platform, on this particular heathen broadcast that you may be not hearing or you're not seeing or you're not listening to here um but i do appreciate you tuning in and watching and listening today if you are catching me live on the youtube premiere hail and welcome to all of my uh youtube channel members and a very special hail and thank you to my patrons on patreon who i will be giving a special shout out at the very end of this podcast as always um, if you are not yet a patron on Patreon and you want to know a little bit more about that, then always, as always, I should say, click on the link tree link that's posted down in the description of this video and in the show notes of this podcast. If you're listening, the link tree link is going to be your one stop shop for everything uh, related to uh, the Midgard Musings brand and the Random Heat and Ramblings podcast and all the ways that you can support. I am uh, looking to reach the 5,000 subscriber mile mark here on YouTube. So if you are listening and you, uh, you know, have a, have a Gmail account and you're not yet subscribed to Midgard Musings on YouTube, now's your chance. Please do so. Um, about four and a half thousand right now, I think. So we're just a little bit under 500 to go. Um, so that'd be a really cool, you know, mile marker to get to. Um, and I would love to get you know, I would love to get at least 10 new patrons on Patreon. Uh, the lowest tier that you can uh, join on Patreon is for a dollar a month. It's the Carl level. Again, all those details are going to be linked up there, down here, over yonder, wherever. Um, you'll notice something a little bit different. And I'm going to just um, talk a bit of, around it here in just a minute to see if you notice anything slightly different about what you see on your screen. And I know for you, uh, podcasters that are just listening to this, if you're driving down the road, heading to work, coming back home from work, going to pick up a pizza, maybe going to pick up a bottle of booze or some water or, or, or you know, go feed your animals or, you know, take your kids to school or pick up grandma from bingo night or whatever it is that you do when you're listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast and you're not able to see what it is that I'm describing then that's just an unfortunate thing for you right now. But for everybody that is watching, you're going to notice something just a tad bit different. There, there, there's an item here uh, in, the, in the frame of this uh, video that is normally not here. Um, however, it has been something that in the early days of Midgard Musings, if you guys have been following me on YouTube for any length of time, then uh, the item that you see in frame now will be reminiscent of an old custom that we had here 
um, with every new video when I first started doing this, um, you know, here on YouTube, there was a lot, it was a different sort of approach. Um, something which I haven't entirely retired, you know, but this weekly uh, thing is, is, is the most consistent form of, of content that I'm able to release right now. But um, basically what I'm referring to is this item right down here. And it's sort of in frame, but it's sort of out of frame as well. Um, but this is an incense holder, an incense burner. It's also got a tea light candles um, on here. And as you can probably tell by the, the wear and tear, it gets, it gets, a, it gets a lot of usage. Um, but basically this, uh, this used to be a custom on Midgard Musings to, you know, burn a little bit of incense. So I thought, why not reintroduce that, that custom? And do that again. It smells nice. Creates the nice, you know, wafting, wafting. I said wafting as if there's an H in it. Um, putting an H where it doesn't belong, Stewie. Uh, what do you mean? It's wheel wheaten. It's wafting in the in the air. But no, it's a. Uh, which one is this one? I think it's clove. I believe it's clove. Yeah, clove. Um, so clove is the aroma of the evening. And uh, going forward on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, I think this will be an ongoing custom for as long as I have this, you know, set up like this. Um, and I would love to hear from you guys. I've, I've got a bunch of different ones. Um, so clove is, is one of my favorites, but I have. I have quite the variety. I am a scented man. I have coffee. I have myrrh. I have frankincense. I have balsam. I have mugwort. So coffee, frankincense, myrrh, balsam, and mugwort, and of course, the clove. Um, so comment down below, or or there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a, a vote, a poll on on Spotify. So for all you Spotify listeners, uh, check out the voting option at the uh, end of this, or or I forget. I guess it kind of just appears throughout the whole thing on Spotify. But it's going to be a vote, a poll. I want you to vote for which incense I should burn on the next episode. So there's some things for you that you can do to kind of you know, become a part of and engaged in the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Tell me the next incense um, that I should burn, and I will uh, tally the votes and burn that one the next time out of the op you know options that we have. So check out that that voting poll or that voting option. All right. So um, looks like it's going to be another um, you know uh, amazing solo journey here um, on tonight's today's um, podcast. I. I had a very busy weekend, um, but not in the way that, you know, you would say it's like, you know, I was out doing a bunch of things. It was a very in-depth and ritual-filled weekend. Um, and uh, as, as a lot of you know, uh, this past weekend on the 15th was the, um, and I'm probably mixing up the name of it, but it was a super blood flower moon, something like that. It was a super moon. Blood, moon, flower, moon. There was a lunar eclipse, a total lunar eclipse that was visible in many parts of North America. Um, unfortunately, in my part of the country, uh, there was a tremendous amount of cloud cover, and I was not able to see totality. You know, I couldn't witness the lunar eclipse. But a lot of people that I do know um, and friends were, you know, granted a reprieve uh, to the cloud you know cover and, and got a chance to see it right at like the perfect time right when there was you know totality um so it was a very i guess you know for a lot of folks a, a magically 
powerful event, you know, cosmically speaking. And uh, took a full advantage of it in, in a lot of ways leading up to and including the night of the full moon, you know. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about that and, and just kind of share with you all what my weekend was like and, you know, here to, you know, hear what you have to say. So if you're, again, listening, watching, um, head over to the YouTube channel for those that aren't there now. Uh, head down into the description and share with us all what your full moon lunar eclipse weekend was like because you know listen leading up to and including the day of the eclipse there's there's a lot of that you know strong lunar uh change energy uh things that are going on so i'd be interested to hear what your weekends were like i've heard a lot of you know asking different people you know they a lot of the folks do a lot of things a lot of pagans do a lot of things but um mine was a bit different in the sense that I didn't have like a ritual or whatever planned for the night of a full moon, um, as I do in the past, or as I have for other significant lunar events, mainly like holy tides, you know? So like when we reach the time of the year for, you know, Sigur Blöther, when we reach the time of the year for uh, Veternachter, the, the winter nights, when we reach the time of Yule, those holy tides that are marked by the lunar cycles, when we reach those full moons, those are very significant and there's always, um, you know, ritual work being planned in and around that. And this particular night though, even though it wasn't like a, a, a scheduled holy tide, as it were, the significance of the event um, I, I felt should be, should be celebrated. Um, so essentially I had initial plans to um, spend the night or two uh, out of the house with um, one of our tribesmen. Um, so Patrick, who's been on this podcast once, yeah, de definitely once before, um, is our tribes law speaker. And Dingo, who hasn't been on the podcast for the last couple of weeks, because he's, he's, he's going through some stuff himself. And he's, he's, um, like I said, I was really hoping he'd, he'd show up for this one. Um, but he's okay. He's all right. Like, no, no, no need to be alarmed. But, um, you know, checking in with them and making sure he's okay. You know, uh, he was not going to be around or at least not, um, I guess, uh, opening up company to come over. I usually, if I spend the night away from the house, I'm usually spending it at Dingo's. So anyway, he, you know, that was off the table and, uh, you know, so Patrick was going to be the host. Um, and then we were going to chill out over there and, and do some things over there, um, starting Friday night. And probably maybe even into Saturday or whatever. We really didn't have like a lot of solid plans set. You know, we were just saying, hey, you know, let's play it by ear. Let's go grab something to eat. It was the day after his birthday. Um, you know, so we were going to do that. Kind of have like a late birthday celebration, just hang out. Something that him and I don't do on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis very often. Um, and so we had plans of that for the whole week last week. And then last Thursday, um, basically a week ago from today, when this podcast is airing, the uh, things changed, the plans changed on, on my end to where I had to pivot and focus my attention on, on some other things. And those other things, I'm not going to go into great detail um, out of respect and privacy of, of the person who um, is, is, is involved. But suffice it to say, uh, a member of my wife's family, and therefore by, you know, by marriage, a member of my family, was having a really, really hard time emotionally, you know, um, mentally, um, even I would say spiritually, just having a really, really hard time. Um, and this is unlike this individual to reach out um, in the way that, that they did to ask for help to, you know, say, basically, I, I, I need to talk. I need, I need, I'm not in a good place. Right. And uh, I think it's pretty, I think it's, it's perfectly, uh, ex, you know, good timing uh, of things to be, be able to be there for someone when I've been talking about this sort of thing for probably 
the biggest part of, of this year, you know, taking care of ourselves, mental health, um, you know, resilience, um, so many things that mental health uh, surrounds and, and, and to be given the opportunity to be there for somebody who is, you know, really suffering and, and, and needing aid, you know, in that way, uh, was, was a tremendous uh, privilege. Um, but anyway, I mean, it's, 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 you know, nothing to make light of. And, and, this, and this individual was, and still is now, um, going through some very, very trying things in their life. And so Thursday, Thursday night, um, this, this family member came over and spent hours, uh, about three to four hours, um, laying it all out on the line, basically just pouring out their soul, pouring out their heart uh, to my wife and I, and kind of giving us, you know, the skinny on, on, on things and telling us what was going on with them. And, you know, seeing somebody, uh, I guess, bear it all out in front of you and become so vulnerable to you, um, says a lot. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's a huge responsibility, um, and, and a tremendous privilege, I feel to be, to be trusted that much with, uh, with somebody, um, that they're willing to just bear it all in front of you and, and to lay it all out on the line. And it's, 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 it's admirable of them and it's brave of them to do it, you know, in, in, in a time when they feel so weak and defeated, um, rather than resorting to destruction, uh, or destructive habits, um, or self-harm or anything like that. Um, they were able to find the, the courage and, and know where their family is and know where their tribe is, as it were, even though this person doesn't subscribe to the same beliefs that I do and isn't by, by far anything, what I would consider pagan or heathen, you know, knowing just that, you know, family is there for you. And, 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 and that, you know, the family that is there for, for them, um, have made us made ourselves so accessible, um, regardless of religion, regardless of faith, regardless of the world views of things, you know, um, it's a pretty diverse crowd um, with the family, as it were, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, um, you know, a, a, probably a heavier mix of, of, of Christian folks. Um, but then you got people like myself, and, you know, my wife a little bit, that, is definitely not a non-traditional religious view on things. So after all those hours of time were spent on Thursday, it was very obvious that the next step um, to ensure that this family member was tended to was to spend time with them. So I shifted, again, I pivoted my weekend events from being spent away from the house with a friend and a brother and a tribesman at, at his place and spending that kind of time. Instead, I let him know that, hey, I need to need to cancel for tonight. Um, however, we're, I'm doing something as a, as a group. I'm having a get together here on the next day on Saturday and you're, and you're invited, which I'm going to be getting to in a moment. So he understood. He said, yeah, I get it. Um, no big deal. And I'll, you know, I'll plan on being there Saturday. So Friday night, instead of me going to Nashville and spending the night, you know, or whatever, a night or two um, with Patrick, I stayed here and had over, um, uh, you know, this, this family member. And I'm going to get pretty um, specific when it comes to just, you know, when I, when I have my guys night or when I have friends over when I have family over when it's, you know, an assembly as it were, you know, there's, there's usually drinking, um, and, and, and consumption of other, um, substances that just help, you know, we're going to be smoking, we're going to be drinking, you know, pipe, vape, whatever, um, and, and, and resin, right. Incense, that sort of thing. And it's a very, uh, just community tribal event to me. And, you know, whether it's one people, two people, five people, um, that's how I unwind. That's how I let loose. It's, you know, have a couple of drinks, you know, burn some resin, smoke a little tobacco, have some, you know, whatever it is and, and just calm down a bit. Well, the substances that were consumed, um, you know, this, this family member is not a, a, um, by any means, a, uh, a regular connoisseur 
of stimulants. And, you know, there was no pressure to like, hey, man, you want to get, you know, messed up here, have a drink, have a this, have a that, like, let's do a bunch of stuff. Like, no, it was just, hey, you know, can I get you something? You know, I'm here. I'm, this is what I'm doing. Um, and he had, you know, he very willingly, you know, just of his own accord, partook of things and um, partook of a little bit too much. And it took a turn of, you know, overwhelming feelings of, um, you know, fear, even sadness, um, despair, you know, very strong and, and, and weighty emotions. And, you know, when, when you're going through hard times, when you're going through hardships, you know, when, when you consume things that are a stimulant of any way, um, they're going to, you know, there's no, there's almost no way of knowing how it's going to react or how you're going to react to those substances. Um, and obviously in this case, the, the reaction was, um, to kind of, you know, incite some paranoia and some, some feelings of, of, of fear even. And, and so I had to, um, quickly adjust my approach because here I am, you know, just enjoying and relaxing. We're hanging out, we're talking, you know, um, I thought, oh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing all right here. We're, we're just, you know, vibing over as it were, as the kids say nowadays, you know, catching that vibe, whatever. And, uh, I, you know, quickly had to be like, wow, he needs help. You know, he, he, he needs, he needs somebody that is with it now. And he needs somebody that it can kind of help guide him back to the reality of you're okay. You're, 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 you're feeling some, you're, you're, you're getting caught in your feels right now, dude. Right. And if you don't, if you don't get a hold of things, then, you know, man, you're going to, you're going to get lost in those feels and you're going to get consumed by it. So I had to be the shaman in, the, in, in that sense. I had to adopt the, the role and put on the mantle of the medicine man, the, the shaman, right. And, and be like, wow, this is more than just you know, having a couple of drinks. Um, and it wasn't even a lot. Like what I said, what he, when I said that he's not a connoisseur of, you know, stimulants and stuff like this guy never drinks, he hasn't gotten high in, in over a decade, you know what I mean? And for, from anything, you know, so the littlest bit of anything is gonna really hit him hard. And then it did. So I had to instead of just being there to vibe with him, you know, and then be there to kind of just enjoy the journey as it were, or, or, you know, re relax. I had to be the one to kind of just take him and, and assure him that what you're feeling right now, it's going to pass, you know, this is just as temporary. Let, let's work through this together. You know, are you drinking plenty of water? When was the last time this is, <laughs> and this is the funniest part. <laughs> the funniest part was because he's sitting there and he's like, he looks, he, uh, I'll never forget it. Like, uh, I was sitting there. He goes, Jesse, I go, yeah. He goes, I'm scared. And I go, all right, dude. I said, uh, I'm here, you know, I'm here with you and there's nothing here that you need to be scared of. Um, I'm going to make sure of that, you know, so let's get you some water. Let's get you some things to kind of offset the the effects of what you're feeling right now is to drink plenty of water and i said you know how you feeling he's like and he starts overthinking it right he starts like pulling out his phone he's he's pulling up an app on his phone going, you know what's my heart rate he's like if i need you you're gonna have to take me to the hospital i'm like okay let you know slow down a bit there hoss like let's pump the brakes and and i i get where you're coming from because you're you're you, you feel you're in a state of shock you know your 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 body is not used to consuming things like this and you know you're having a, a, a reaction to stuff. And I said, okay, you know, if you need me to, I, I can, but let's, you know, I don't think you're going to need that. And I, I'm going to be here to help you through it. And when I say what was the funny part is that I looked at him and I said, when's the last time you took a piss? He goes, I don't know, man. I said, well, then go do it. Get up and go piss. I'll walk with you. Right. I'm not, not, not trying to be weird over here. I said, if I want to walk with you to the bathroom, make sure you don't like fall and crack your head on the sink. Make sure that you're actually, you know, relieving yourself in the toilet bowl, that sort of stuff. I was like, but go ahead and, 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 and void your body of, of, of some things and then continue to drink, you know, stay hydrated. And he did that and he came out and I go, so how you feel? He's like, 
I feel kind of good now. I feel better. I was like thinking to myself, who would have thought that telling someone to go take a leak would be considered medical advice. But again, you know, you just, you never know um, in the moment, just what, what may happen. And I'm glad I had the, the presence of mind to think of that and to help him um, do such a, just a basic bodily function that at the time he was too over, overwhelmed and consumed with his feelings and getting caught in his own head that something as simple and basic as that was, was neglected. Um, and then, you know, I, I cut him off at that point. I'm like, great, you know, everything that you've had right now, you need to stop and eat and drink fluids like, you know, water and, and, and food and stuff and, and, and let the effects of what has taken hold of you run its course. Don't, don't feed any more into it because this is temporary. You're going to get past this. And he did, and it took him a little while, but it came in waves. You know, he was, it was like, he was riding this roller coaster. He would have his ups and he'd have his downs and we were laughing and then he was scared again. And it was a really intense experience, um, especially, you know, for me, because I'm sitting here thinking, wow, we're just going to have a good time. And, and turned out, I mean, it was a good time. Um, maybe not so much for him for the most part, because of the, again, those moments of, of fear and paranoia, but, and he kept apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a, a buzzkill. I'm in this. I'm like, dude, you don't have to apologize. This is, this is everything that is about what I'm about. I said, you know, I'm, this is, I'm, I'm comfortable here. This is not bothering me. This is not disturbing me. I'm in my wheelhouse, man. Um, I'm about it. So we lit some incense, some re some resin. Actually, I had some dragon's blood resin, which is as has a lot of you know anti-inflammatory, anti-diarrheal, anti, um, uh, a lot of just good healing properties. And, and it's actually something um, that is I, I come to find out it's like a natural bug repellent too. Very calming, very soft uh, aroma. Um, so we burned some of that resin, you know, and I guided the smoke and let him kind of breathe in. I said, this may help calm you down. Is it helping? He's breathing it in. He's like, yeah, it helps. And I said, okay, you let me know if any of this gets to be uncomfortable or too much. If I, you know, if, if this is too much of a uh, sensory overload, um, but I'm going to, you know, so I'm going to rely on you to kind of just let me know. I said, but, uh, I'm, you know, I kept an eye on him, kept watching him, checking his, you know, um, body language, you know, all the kinds of things that when you're not, I guess, and I don't like to use the word trained in this because I, I, I feel like some of this has to become, it has to be inherently in you. Like you have to be the, the one to want to guide, the one to want to caretake, the one to want to be the healer. You know, not everybody's about that. Not everybody's meant to be that. Um, but I got to achieve that you know, achievement unlocked, whatever. Um, but I got to experience that in, in, in with somebody whose family and, and who was going through something so, so weighty and so, you know, has such an impact on their life. And I was there for them um, to get past the difficult moment of the healing process, partially the healing process. It's not like that's, that's not the thing that healed him, but it was part of it. It was, it was a healing ceremony. It was a ritual. So that was a long night. Um, and then Saturday, like I said, I, I, I told Patrick, I said, hey, I'm going to have him back over. You're welcome to come. And then I extended the invitation to the rest of the tribe, you know, and everybody had a reason that they gave me um, of saying that they probably weren't going to be there. Again, Dingo, with him, what he's going through is, hey, I appreciate the invite, but I'm still, you know, dealing with my own stuff. And I'm like, it's cool, man. I just didn't want to, you know, exclude you. Do your thing. Um, and then we'll be here when you get back, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, respect. You, 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 he's fully capable. He's the Gothi, right? So if he needs to go down those dark paths and he needs to do his Gothi stuff, then, man, you know, Gothi's going to Gothi. So um, he's going to do the go thing. He's going, he's going to do the thing. He's go thing. He's go thing. Yeah, he's go thing. Um, and then Gene, I invited him. He's, he was working, he says, I'm going to be working up here on my dad's property um, all day, probably not going to make it. Um, and then Richard, he's, uh, he was recording an album or an EP uh, in the studio all day Saturday. He's like, I don't know if I come or not. I might, may not, may not, whatever. I said, it's cool, man. You know, I'm going to be grilling. Um, if you want to bring anything to grill, that's fine. Otherwise, there's going to be stuff to, 
you know, it was just chicken. I had, I ended up getting chicken and chicken gizzards and tur uh, what was it tuna steaks. Um, Patrick came over, he brought some like stir fried vegetables. We had some red skin potatoes. It was a, it was a mini feast. And that's how do we do it, man. I was like, that's how when I do these like guys nights or when I invite people over, I'm like, you know, you want me to throw something on the grill? That's fine. I said, but we're, we're going to eat. We're going to eat good. So Patrick showed up and it was just me and him for a while. Me and him basically did like the cooking aspect of things and had a couple of drinks. And then Justin showed up, my wife's cousin, a family member, right? He showed up. Um, and I told him, I said, I, none of more, no, no more of this, you know, no, no more stimulants. He's like, no, man, I don't need any more. He said that last night was enough for me. I'm like, good. Cause we're not having a repeat of that. You know, you, you had your moment. I said, you know, um, don't think you need that anymore. So, so we're not going to offer any to you. Right. Patrick and I, though, we were, we were doing our thing. And then surprisingly, everybody else that I invited with the exception of Dingo ended up showing up. Richard came, uh, Gene came. And the cool thing about that whole thing is that Richard and Gene haven't seen each other since before Yule. Um, and I want to get Richard back on this podcast because he's been here before talking about like Enochian beliefs and stuff. And I actually want to get him back on this podcast um, on, for, to update on some things because Richard has an incredible story. Um, he, he basically nearly, he died in, in, in some form of way last year. His appendix ruptured. It was a big, huge thing. Um, it happened right around the time that I was on my shamanic journey in November. It actually happened, I think, that week. Uh, or the week thereafter, it was right around the same time. And so he's going to have some really neat things, I think, to talk about. So I'm looking forward to getting him back on here. But he showed up and Gene and him hadn't seen each other since before then. You know, because they would neither. Well, Richard came to Yule, but Gene didn't make it. So they uh, they had a chance to reunite and. I've posted on a couple of my, uh, well, on all of my socials, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, I've, I've, I've posted pictures of um, this ritual staff. It's a uh, Raul Blongander is what we're calling it. It's the red, red bloom or, or, or red tree uh, spirit. Red bud is, is the actual name of the tree. It's a red bud, Eastern red bud. They're, they're pretty prolific here in this region of the country. They have a lot of um, medicinal uh, uh, properties, um, but the tree uh, that this staff is made from came from my um, in-laws' property. They were trimming and pruning and and and, and whatnot their their land, and um, I helped with a lot of that work. And so this staff is a ritual staff that's going to be used. Um, and again, Rauth Blomgander is the name of the staff. It's red, red bloom, red flower uh, spirit. So um, it's the spirit of the red bud, basically. Um, and every tribal member is going to have a piece that they impart into this staff because it's going to be used for ritual, uh, ritual purposes for, with our tribe. Um, and when Gene came over and he looked at the staff, he's, he, he took his knife out and he, and it, 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 next thing you know, man, like we're in like full blown ritual mode. He starts carving into this, into this staff and he carves a symbol um, onto the staff. And it's, you know, it's, it's very, it's crude right now. We did burn, we did wood burn into it, but then there were some other modifications that were drawn into it. So, you know, guys, you know, stay tuned for a, a better view of it when I finish actually putting it into the tree, into the, into the limb itself, burning it into it. But the, 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 the stencil as it were is kind of there. Um, but it was so ritualistic in its delivery. Um, the wasn't planned either. Like, you know, I just, I brought it out. I wanted to show them like, Hey, this is what's going to become our, another relic, another tribal relic, you know, um, over here, the stuff that you see, like the drum, the rattle, some other things that are out of out of sight um, behind me uh, that were crafted and made by J.M. Olson are, are tribal relics. And this staff is going to be 
uh, a tribal relic that we all have a piece and a, and, and a part and we all going to impart something onto it. And, and Saturday night was when Gene imparted his um, part, you know, when, when, when he delivered his part, he carved something into the staff, a symbol. And it was something he's like, I don't know what this is. It's just something that's just coming to my mind. And I'm like, do it. Don't even think about it at that point. Don't even try to process what it is. If it's coming to you in that sort of way and it's, in, and it's, it's inspiring, um, the, you know, the inspiration is flowing in that way. Those, those, those creative juices are flowing, then, then do it. Don't even think about it. Let's just do it. And that's what we did. We, we, he carved it into the stick, the staff. I burned it with a, you know, the burning tool. Um, and I guess I said, just everything about it was so ritualistic. And then thereafter, later on that night, um, there was, there was divination um, between like Patrick and him and, and, and Richard and him. Um, and everybody else left. He stayed uh, till about two or three in the morning. <laughs> Uh, and you know, you know, it's, it's a good ritual night, man, when the emotions are running so high where that, you know, like I, I remember having moments where, you know, look, and I'll just get real, like we, yes, we were drinking, you know, we, we had whiskey and there was rum um, from Patrick and stuff like there was, there was several, there was plenty of libations going around. But I wouldn't say that any of us were obliterated and, and so far out of our minds due to the alcohol that we were not within our own, like that we weren't conscious and sentient of, of, of things that were going on. If anything, it just kind of enhanced the, the mood um, and, and helped carry the ritual essence of the night to where it went. Um, but the feelings, the, the emotional feelings, you know, connecting with your tribe um uh, at a time when everyone's state of consciousness was altered very very special again on the eve of a full moon which so also happens to be the the the, the, the full moon that's a lunar eclipse so all of those energies were existing in the air and, and, and around us and we were tapping into that 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 primal energy that that old energy and, and altered our states of consciousness to the point that we were aware, we were cognizant, and, and, but still impacted in such a way that we were vulnerable to each other and connected with each other in ways that were not, I think, if, you know, I would, I would venture to say that they were not uh, normal ways of connecting. You know, it's, you know, you can connect on those, on those levels without the use of external aids or, or, or other substances to stimulate um those 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 senses in that way um but but needless to say is we we had and we were connected in that way and, and it made for such a powerful evening of of ritual um when you when you face a brother of yours or, or tribesman or when you face someone like it who is kin to you and you feel their emotions by looking at them in their eyes and projecting your emotion to them and they respond in that way. And then you re it's a reciprocal thing. It's like unspoken communication. It's almost like tele telepathy. Um, you know, expressions, thoughts, feelings. Um, it's so raw and it's, uh, you know, after it was all said and done, like the following day, um, you know, talking with like Patrick afterwards, he's like, I'm glad we got to be ourselves. It was a great night and I'm glad we got to be ourselves. And I was like, absolutely. I mean, that's probably the, the most simplest yet detailed way of putting it. We got to be ourselves. We got to disconnect from uh, the, the hinges a little bit, you know, unhinge from the, the physical forms, the restricted forms of ourselves and really let ourselves just be. Just be ourselves, man. Um, and the uh, the interesting thing too is is you know Richard wasn't partaking of of any of these substances to to any great extent. I think he had a shot, 
just between him and Gene. Like he had a shot of alcohol, whiskey or rum or whatever it was. I don't remember which. So out of all of us, you know, he was the most, I guess, you know, sober one, the most, you know, um, uninebriated, the most, if, if anybody's state of mind was, was unaltered, it was his. But he felt it. He felt the connection between all of us, the magic that was alive in that moment and throughout that night. And so obviously, um, when, you, when, you know, when, when, I, when I reflect and I look back and I go, man, you know, when I went to bed, literally Sunday morning, because again, Saturday night went into Sunday morning and Gene never left until about three, two or three Sunday. Um, when I lay down and I, and I slept, you know, and I didn't wake up till later on in, in that day, I had physical work I needed to do. Like I, I had to go um, mow a, a, a lady's yard in our community who I've never met a day in my life. But on Saturday, she came by and was like, oh, by the way, can you think you could do this for me? And my grandson is fixing our mower. I just need somebody to mow the yard this week. And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, you know, I had to come back from from all of that stuff until like, oh, now it's time to do, you know physical labor and, and exert your energy and physically where I, you know, for two days, pretty much two days straight, I've been exerting myself, uh, you know, emotionally, spiritually, I was wore out, you know, <laughs> I mean, I was wore out, um, more so I think from just the, the, the energy, um, tap that I just kind of let wide open. Um, and so I get, you know, I was getting a lot of uh, different people asking me, you know, what are you doing for tonight? Since tonight's the full moon, meaning Sunday. And asking, you know, what are you going to do for the full moon? And I'm like, honestly, nothing. I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm relaxing. Uh, if anything, I'm going to do some wood burning on a rune set, which is the last part of this story. Um, so the rune set, you know, uh, was a red bud rune set very similar to one that I recently uh, sold journey uh, journey with Ivor um, very present here on the channel and so you know if you're here watching and tuning in um, that rune set that I made that ended up going to you we had another one um, and I still have I still have enough material to make at least uh, I still have enough material to, to, to make probably one more full Elder Futhark rune set uh, out of that red bud tree. But the second rune set that I just completed this weekend on the night of the full moon um, was going uh, or is going to uh, our Gothi's cousin. Um, and a very interesting story on the way that came about is because he approached me and he said, hey, you know, uh, she's looking into getting into studying the runes and I'm either going to give her my rune set or thought, you know, maybe if you would be willing to make one um, for her, I can compensate you for that and just tell me how much. And uh, I'm like, well, what do you want? You know, do you want, I can do birch, we can do driftwood. I got a couple of seashell runes left. And I said, I also have got material to make the red bud runes. So, so which do you want? He said, the red bud, red bud runes sound good. And again, how much? And I was dodging around the whole thing because this is tribe, you know, even though it's a cousin of his and even though his cousin's not a member of the tribe, it's, it's you know, association. And I'm like, I'm not going to charge you for this. He's like, you're going to tell me how much that is or I'm just going to send you the a money. I'm just going to send you the amount. And I'm like, OK, let's do this. I need resin. I, uh, you know, I, I burn a lot of resin and I said, you know, I need a steady supply of it. And I said, I'm thinking of getting some new stuff or, or some more stuff. And so let's do a gift exchange. How let, let's, let's, let's count this as a gift, you know, so you, I get you the runes and, and we, or we get them to, you know, to your cousin um, as a gift. And then in exchange, I will accept some resins. And that's the way we did it. And that's the way we did it. We, we exchanged a gift. So I've got some more resins now, some ones that I've never burnt before, some, some of which were enjoyed the other night with the tribe as they were here, minus Dingo, of course. Um, so um, 
but again, those runes were, were, were made last week and I finished them burning them and, and, and giving them their, their, their runic identity um, on the night of the super blood flower moon lunar eclipse. So I think I've only made one other set by my, by my hands. I've, I've made one other set that probably equals in, in power to the lining up of things. I, I made a uh, Goa monitor um, during Seeger Bloat one year, uh, a birch rune set that is in Gene's possession, actually. Um, those runes are, are, were a gift to him. And, um, or he, or he, or he obtained those runes. I forget if it was a straight gift or if he, if he bought them or, or, or how it was, it was several, it was a couple of years ago now. So I, I forget some of the logistics of it, but anyway, they made it to him and they were made again on the night of a Sigurd full moon in the Goa moon of their month. So the Goa moon, Sigurd bloat, um, that is probably this, the most next most significant rune set that I made during like a lunar event, you know, this one being that they were runes carved from the tree that I harvested and that I hand cut the pieces and I, and I did everything to them. Um, these are probably the most, you know, if you just, if you wanted to put a, a label on it, the most powerful runes that I've ever made. And I'm very proud to have been given the opportunity and it's an honor and a privilege to have been given the opportunity to make them and to finish them and complete them on such a monumental occasion on a, on a cosmic event as it, as it is. And as it was, you know, so a very, very magical filled, a very, um, significantly spiritual weekend it has been or, or or it was this past weekend you know and i was really hoping to get um dingo in here to talk about it because i'm you know kind of anxious to hear what's going on with him but maybe we'll hear from him soon um i can't make any promises because again he, that he's on his own path right now he's doing his thing um but i can almost assuredly say that when it is time to get back on here and he does come that we're going to hear some pretty wild stories you know, because it's never a dull moment with Dingo. It's never a dull moment with that man. Um, he's been my guide um, in this, you know, in, in, in the spirituality and of, of, of this path for years now. Um, and he's partook in me. He has partook with me in many different rituals. The most significant ritual of my life was with him and, and Patrick. And yeah, nothing, nothing that he needs to do um, is, is, is of concern. Like, uh, you know, the fact that he's just kind of been MIA, not, M not really MIA, like we still connect, but how to the level at which he's, he's um, gone to kind of disconnect from the outside and to go inward. Um, I think for a lot of people, it would be cause for concern. Um, but I know the man and um I know that he's doing what needs to be done. And when he comes back from it all, and when he's back from it, I, I, I hope that there's, uh, and I believe that there will be a refreshed and renewed um, dingo to, to behold and to, and to see. So all good things that are worth waiting for, you know, if it, you know when, when he comes back and when he's back here on the podcast, it'll be, it'll be well worth the wait um, or the time that he wasn't here. So um, perhaps next week or in the coming weeks, we'll be talking with him to kind of get a sense of like, yeah, what happened, man? Where'd you go? What'd you do? How'd it go? You missed some stuff over here with us, but that, and you know, that, that's the other neat thing too, is like, even though he wasn't here physically, like he, he, he had made a, a statement saying, I'll, I'll make my, I'll make a, I'll make a stop or I'll make my presence known astrally or whatever. Like, even though I'm not there physically, I'll, 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 I'll make a, I'll make an appearance. And he did. I, I have no doubt that 
a couple of things that stand out in my mind that I'm not going to like really go into too deeply right now. Because, you know, the, the, the level at which I share these things, you know, a lot would argue like, wow, that's that's pretty private stuff. You know, the, the fact that you're sharing that level of things. Um, but I want people to know, I want people to, to realize that, you know, it, you know, yes, this is this was closed off to us. But the experience, it's not like I'm sitting here showing you video of it all. And, you know, whatever, like, I'm just telling you a story, I'm telling you um, a tale. And I'm, and I'm weaving the words into your mind and into your ears to know that this exists and these things happen and, and they happen in, in ways that are organic and that are real and genuine and true. And so when I say that Dingo, what he said was that he would make an appearance. When I say that, that, his, that, he, that we did feel his presence and that he did make an appearance, that we, he, his presence was felt, trust me in that I am not bullshitting you <laughs> drop the one uh when dingo's here it's usually a you know a little bit more of a, a mature audience type type show but yeah there's my one one for the team as it were so yeah that's uh that's kind of where things were at man um very very impactful very powerful weekend um and I hope that it was something of, of, of similar nature uh, to you. Now, this event, this, this lunar eclipse, the, the, the full moon and everything, um, again, probably impacted different people in different ways. And if you're willing to share your story, you can do it a number of ways. You can write in to MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com. And I'm happy to reread or read back your story. If you wish to remain anonymous, uh, just let me know, and uh, I will definitely keep your identity concealed. Um, you can also call into the Midgard Musings hotline, 615-671-9832. Um, if you use a moniker or, or an alias uh, in your voicemail when you do call in, you can definitely do that. Um, but re just realize that when you call in, your voice will be heard on the podcast airwaves, as it were, and it will be broadcasted to the internet because I would love to hear your story. Um, so again, you can remain anonymous. You can use an alias. Um, if you wish to not be heard, then you can just tell me, hey, this is my story, but don't put my voice on the air. Um, I just want to know ahead of time before I do that, because it's assumed that if you're going to call in and all right, yeah, you want your voice heard and I want to put this on the podcast and I want to talk about what you're talking about. I don't want to share it with the world and and, and you know, but yeah, there's your platform. There's your opportunity. So you can write in, you can call in, you can at me on Twitter. You can at me at, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I don't really monitor the Instagram feeds too much. I just cross post there from the Facebook platform because they're linked. Um, but yeah, tell us about your lunar eclipse, full moon weekend experience. What kind of magic did you get into? What kind of experiences did you have? How did it impact and affect your spirituality your views on um your religion you know the way that you, the ways that you connect with the gods your ancestors the vatir the whites the spirits around you all of these forces that are living that are active that exist but that sometimes get forgotten and overlooked so feel free to chime in and tell us all your stories midgard musings tn at gmail.com 615-671-9832 or you can just tag me on any of the socials that I mentioned. If you do like what I do here on this podcast and on this show uh, and in Midgard Musings in general, uh, then consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member on YouTube. Either way does provide monetary support and financially supports what I do here and helps me achieve goals to continue to, to drive and deliver new content uh, for all of you each week. So all of that information is linked in the link tree link that is posted in the description of this video, in the show notes of this podcast, wherever it is that you're listening or watching this on, check out the link tree and see what fits you. There's social media, there's the Patreon, there's also merchandise through spring. All right. So if you want to get a Midgard Musings uh, hoodie, t-shirt, sweatpants, whatever, there's a lot of stuff out there that if you buy, I do see a percentage of those sales. Um, and it does help support the channel and the podcast as well. 
So I hope you all enjoyed today's podcast. If you did, don't forget to like the podcast, like the video, upvote it, rate it. Okay, I don't know what all of the different platforms that I'm streaming on or that I'm available on, um, you know, uh, provide you the option to do, but whatever it provides you the option to do, if you like it and you can upvote it, share it, you know, favorite it, rate it, I don't know, whatever it is, definitely engage in that way. Um, for all of the YouTubers that watch and, and, and stuff on this, definitely engage down in the description, uh, not the description, but in the comment section beyond just the live stream. So whatever you're commenting here in the lives, put it down there in the comment section because it's going to help the algorithms figure out that, yeah, we need to get stuff like this out to more people like you and her and he and them and they and everybody, just everybody. So feel free to, you know, engage in that way and, and, and uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, the whole bit. Um, sounds pretty redundant at this point, but I mean it. I, I appreciate you. All right. So with that being said, let's wrap things up and thank our patrons. So to Janet King, to Jeffrey Wright, and to Alex D, who are either Yarl level patrons or chieftain level patrons, a very special hail and thanks to you for supporting Midgard Musings and the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast in this way. For everybody else that's curious or interested in getting their names shouted out at the end of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, click the link in the show notes for the Linktree link that will point you in the direction of Patreon. I have multiple tiers that you can choose from, and each tier will bring its own special perk. Once again, thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast brought to you by me, by Jesse, uh, a Midgard Musings production. And until we see each other again in the next episode, may the gods continue to notice you, walk with you, and may your ancestors always smile upon you. Thank you.